Hmm, that's drunk. Hi, welcome to part 5 of this series that looks at fan-made improvement patches for Super Nintendo games. If you're unfamiliar, here's one great example of what an improvement patch is. This guy named Vidor Villela made a patch that utilized the Super Nintendo's cartridge-native SA1 processor fix, which removed a ton of slowdown from games like Gradius 3, Contra 3, and Super Castlevania 4. There are also lots of patches that give the player some simple quality-of-life improvements, like stuff that simplifies the list of spells in Final Fantasy Six, or maybe something that simply allows you to use the L and R buttons to scroll through items in Link to the Past, instead of pulling up the start menu every time. To get these to work, follow the link for each patch in the video description, download the file, and use a utility program like Beat or Lunar IPS to join together the patch file with the game ROM. If you need help troubleshooting, there's people on the ROM hacking forums that can help you out. Now, here's a patch that people have been clamoring for for a long, long time. It allows you to play Jurassic Park for Super Nintendo, and you can save your game! Imagine that! This has long been this particular game's biggest flaw. It's a perfectly good adventure-style action game, but there's no save battery. There's not even a frickin' password system. Well, no more. Now you can save your way proper like you would any other game of the time by going someplace, getting killed by dinosaurs, rebooting your save, and getting killed by dinosaurs again. It's what everybody's always wanted. The creator of this patch, Yoshi Fanatic, provides some interesting insight as to why Jurassic Park never had a save feature in the first place. For whatever reason, this game keeps track of the state of every single sprite in the overworld all at once, so as a result, the save files were just too large to store on SRAM because it was keeping track of too much information. Well, we don't have to worry about that anymore thanks to this patch. And if you're not satisfied with just the vanilla Jurassic Park, guess what? There's a Jurassic Park randomizer! Wait, what? That's right, this patch shuffles around everything from your starting position to color palettes to the order you need to complete missions, which door leads to which building, different ID cards for different doors, and it also works with the Jurassic Park save patch I just talked about. It's pretty dang cool, but bear in mind, it can be a bit tricky to get this one to work. You edit an ASM file in Notepad, then you join the randomizer files with the ROM using a utility patch called ASAR, and even once you do that, you're stuck with just the one randomized version of the game. To get a different one, you'd have to do that whole process again, which can be a pain. But still, it's always nice to see new randomizers out there, and this game lends itself really well to the format. Both this and the save patch were made by Yoshi Fanatic, so kudos to them. I'll take any and every excuse to talk about Chrono Trigger, especially improvement patches. This one is called Enhanza Edition, made by Inuksuk, I guess is how you pronounce that. It's another rebalancing hack, but this one features over 80 enemy AI scripts that were rewritten, mostly to make enemies a little smarter and more aggressive. It makes the game more difficult than the original, but it's certainly not strictly a difficulty hack where the only goal is to make the game super hard. The main point here is that you can't just mindlessly mash the fight button in most battles. Yeah actually have to, you know, pay attention and try. In addition to that, all sorts of items and equipment were redesigned and some techs were modified, and it's all geared towards making battles more interesting, so you have to be more prepared with the right equipment, the right weapons, and the right party members for each section of the game, especially for each boss fight. This one is pretty cool, albeit it makes the game a little more time consuming to get through, but hey, that just means you spend more time playing Chrono Trigger. Final Fantasy VI is constantly getting tinkered with, and here's another one called Rose, which stands for Revised Old Style Edition. This one is expansive to the point that nearly every little thing has been adjusted to a certain extent, and it's an impressive balancing act between updating the game while maintaining the feel and pacing of the original content. There's also lots of quality of life features that have been added, like the ability to do a soft reset to your save file by pressing Start, Select, L, and R at the same time in the overworld or in battle. Also, the text has been reformatted to reflect the style of later Final Fantasy games, and the names for enemies and items have been extended to up to 16 characters. It also stacks most of the bug fix patches that are out there as well, including the uncensored patch. All in all, this is another one that's just a massive team effort of nearly three dozen people, and if you're looking for a reason to visit the original Final Fantasy VI nowadays, this is an excellent way to do it. Here's a patch for Shadowrun that people have been clamoring for for years. All this patch does is simply add mouse support. That's it. 
Shadowrun is a unique game that has some great qualities, especially with the story and how it's told, but the combat has always been a bit suspect. It's rarely ideal to have to use a D-pad to move a small cursor around, especially when you're dealing with such small targets. But thankfully with the mouse support patch, you can either use the SNES mouse, which is uh, one way to do it I guess, or you can use the optical mouse from Hyperkin, which makes life much easier. Or you can just play it on an emulator on your PC if you'd like. Bear in mind, the mouse has to be plugged into the second controller port, because you do still need some controller functionality here. You pretty much just use the first player controller with your left hand to hold down the L button when you need to get to your character's status screen. It works great, and whichever way you do it, this patch makes Shadowrun a much more player-friendly game. Thanks to Rain Warrior for this patch. Star Fox has a couple really good improvement patches as well, and seriously, if you only pick out one patch to try from this video, make sure it's this hack made by Sunlit Space 542. It's utilized to make use of fast ROM and an overclocked Super FX chip, so in other words, the game is sped up big time, and it's so much fun to play. There's also some cosmetic changes here, like using the display arrangement of Star Fox 64 and the character portraits from Star Fox 2, but the big appeal here is to just burn through this game as quickly as possible thanks to all the performance improvements. I know a lot of people think Star Fox has aged poorly, and in a lot of ways it definitely has, but you'll forget about all of that if you play the game with this patch. Here's an interesting one for Final Fantasy V, and it's based on the Ancient Cave from Lufia 2, which, if you remember, is a series of randomly generated dungeons where you start out at level 1 and work your way through as many dungeons as you can. This is a similar deal except with Final Fantasy V, and it works pretty well. However, the game itself can be kind of tricky to get to work. You have to patch the Japanese ROM, then apply the RPGE English patch, then change the name of the SRAM file that comes with the patch to the same file name as your hacked ROM. You'll know it works properly if you see four save files when you start up the game, and each of them lead to the Ancient Cave, which you access by getting a random battle prompt on this square of desert here. Once you get to this room, you can talk, so to speak, to each of the items in the room, and they act as a menu so you can see all your stats, automatically organize your items, and adjust the difficulty. Then you head to the right and begin, and man oh man, this one is really hard. You've got a 10 minute timer on every floor, and like I said, the enemies and items you find are randomly generated, so yeah, this patch isn't for everyone since it can get brutally difficult right away, but it's still a fun one to explore. Thanks to Inu for developing this one. Here's one I like for Final Fight 2, it's a readjustment patch made by a game hack fan with the biggest change allowing five enemies on screen at once instead of just three. This makes a huge difference in streamlining the game for a better experience since enemies can spawn a lot faster. This patch also allows you and a second player to select the same character if you'd like, and this game really gets crazy when you've got two players and five enemies on the screen at once. And yes, this does work on original hardware with a flash cartridge. Whoa, I'm seeing double! Four Hagars! I wanted to show off Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 Deluxe, a patch made by Lucas Dexter, only Dexter is spelled with a 5 somehow. Anyway, this is one of those arcade ports that had a bunch of stuff stripped away to make room for the game to function on a Super Nintendo cartridge, and this patch restores a lot of the stuff that's missing. For instance, Shiva is a playable character, smoke can be selected on the character screen, Animalities are restored, certain arenas are unlocked and added like Goro's Lair and the Graveyard, and there's a 3 on 3 mode. It goes a long way to making this one look and play like the arcade original, which is pretty cool. Finally, over the years there have been patches made to improve great games like Super Metroid, Link to the Past, Star Fox, and now finally, here's a patch for, uh, Dennis the Menace. Yes, that's right, it's made by Billy Time Games, and this is a rebalancing patch that curbs the absurd difficulty this game has, like resetting the timer after you die, giving bosses fewer invincibility frames, and just making collecting weapon upgrades and items, uh, you know, actually worth it. Seriously, this game is terrible, it's laughably difficult to the point of being unfair, and it's just not good enough to make the frustration worth it. And yeah, even with this patch, you're still playing friggin' Dennis the Menace. But at least the game is a bit normalized, so to speak, and instead of comically unbalanced. I just wanted to show this one off so you could see that even games like Dennis the Menace are getting improvement patches. Alright, that's all I got for today. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day!